Hi folks. So uh, today I'm gonna, I'm not gonna pick anything. I'm just gonna show you uh, some interesting things about interchangeable core locks. So uh, previously I've shown you this uh, Schlage Kryptonite uh, KS13 padlock and uh, this Abus83 uh, padlock, and these are technically a form of interchangeable core. Uh, you simply have to open the lock, and then if you look down in the shackle hole, there's a screw that you can remove, and that will drop this core out, and then you can uh, rekey it or replace it with a different core. And so that's sort of the poor man's interchangeable core. A real interchangeable core system uses a lock similar to one of these. Uh, we have the three basic types here. This is the small format interchangeable core, uh, mostly known uh, mostly from uh, Best or Falcon. They make quite a lot of these, and Best sort of uh, invented this system. And for a while, that was just interchangeable core. Uh, and then a little bit later in the 70s, uh, Corbin Ruswin introduced the full size interchangeable core. It's this guy right here. And then more recently, Schlage introduced what they call the full size interchangeable core. So small format, large format, full size. Uh, Schlage invented this uh, really as a way to make an interchangeable core version of their Primus and Everest locks, which is why uh, it's a little bit larger than some of the others. And each of these has a slightly different way of going about this whole thing. So Best has this little notch here, you can see sticking out on the side, and that actually holds it in to the uh, body or the housing that it's going to be put into and the keys look like this so let's uh, take one so this is the operator key that's the one that you give to the person that uses the office and there you can see I can turn it 360 degrees no problem but what do I do if I need to change what uh, key, uh, what lock is in the door? Well, that's why you have a control key. You can see it's stamp control, and you can see that the bidding of that key is very, very different from the control key or from the operator key. But when I put that in, I can only turn the key maybe 15, 20 degrees, but that's enough to retract that lug that and pull the core out of the lock. Uh, so I have this uh, Abbas 83 IC uh, body here that has one of these best cores in it. And so I'm going to put that control key in and now I've got the uh, lock core out. And you can see it has this little tail piece here to uh, get it to fit the actuator in the padlock. So if I want to open it, just take the standard operator key, and there we go. And so this is a, a uh, broken uh, SFIC cylinder from that same set, and this one I cut open so I can show you just what it looks like inside. So first we have the plug, and there you can see the pin chambers and the bottom of the keyway. And that's the bit that uh, the operator key raises the pins to. So that's the shear line for the operator key. But then you can pull this control sleeve out. This is where the control lug is. And you can see that it would form an extra shear line here between the sleeve and the body. And so when the operator key, or the control key, is inserted, it raises another set of pins up to uh, the top of, the, of this shear line. So with a small format interchangeable core, you always have 
three different pins. Your key pin and your uh, driver pin are just like in a standard pin tumbler lock, but uh, but they they have a middle pin uh, that's sometimes called the build-up pin or the control pin, uh, and that's in addition to any mastering pins that you might have if you want to include it in a master keyed system. So you have your key pin, your control pin, and your driver pin, plus any uh, master pins that are added in there because you have to be able to raise those pins to match two different shear lines. And uh, BEST and most other small format interchangeable core systems use uh, what's called a, a constant height system, where all the pin stacks total up to the same height. And they're usually something like 0.4 inches uh, for small format cores. Um, and so each pin is given a number and you total up the numbers uh, and you need to match a certain total uh, for that. Then uh, large format interchangeable core works pretty similarly to small format. You can see there's the control lug and there's that sleeve again, but this time it's actually only the four chambers in the middle. This is a, this is a six pin lock, so there's one pin stack here and one pin stack here and then four in the middle. The four in the middle uh, have a key pin, a master, a control pin or a build-up pin as uh, Corbin Russwin refers to it and then a driver pin up here and uh, this means that your control key only needs to have four positions that are unique and the way that Corbin Russwin does the pinning calculations for it, the uh, the build-up pins or the control pins are given uh, an amount, kind of like uh, an addition, just telling you uh, this adds zero to the height, this adds plus one or plus two depths, this subtracts one depth or two depths. Um, so it's actually much easier to do the math on one of these than it is to do for the uh, small format. And then the last one is uh, the Schlage large format. And this one, uh, your control key and your uh, operator key can actually be exactly the same uh, set of cuts, can be the exact same bidding, because this is pinned exactly the same way as a standard uh, six pin Schlage, uh, Schlage lock, just your uh, key pin and your driver pin, but if you look in the back here, and we can get this to focus, you can see this uh, very small pin right here, and that is supposed to fit into a little groove with this uh, that's in the bottom of this ring, and that pushes another pin that you can hopefully just make out in the shadow there, that engages with this pin. So you can see when I push it in, it moves around a little bit. Can't go very far because this pin is not quite in the right position. But the way it works is that here's your regular uh, six-pin Schlage key, SC4, and then this is the control blank for that same key. So if we put them one over the other, line them up correctly, you can see there's this extra little tab on the front, and that makes it just long enough to go into this lock, and this might be slightly the wrong keyway for this, yeah, that's not the right keyway, but this uh, tab would reach in and lift that pin up, and uh, I have on loan from uh, Jeff Moss out in uh, Cleveland, an interesting little example of this. So you might notice these keys look a little bit different. That's because these are uh, Schlage Everest 29 keys. And these are two that I cut by hand based on uh, some measurements that uh, a gentleman named uh, Aidan McCarthy 
who's a tool member up in Boston, uh, got for me. Great guy, and he was a huge help with this because Jeff Moss had sent me this lock a while ago uh, to try to get it open because he had gotten it uh, at a flea market or something with no uh, keys for it. So you can see, if we open it up, uh, that screw is there to retain the actuator. Uh, it doesn't drop the core out. Instead, you take this control key, which again has that extra tab on the front, or on the tip, and now, if I insert it all the way, there we go, and I only get that 20 degrees or so rotation, but then I can pop this out, and there you can see, come on, focus, focus, work with me here, come on, come on buddy, there we go, okay, hopefully that's not too uh, fuzzy, but again you can see that uh, control pin right there, and when I put the control key all the way in, you see it's now lifted into place, and now I can retract that control pin. So if you ever have a uh, Schlage full-size interchangeable core lock and you lose your control key, uh, and this is actually what Schlage even tells you in their uh, interchangeable core manuals, is just take any user key that works in the lock and copy it onto the special control key blank and then you can uh, and then you have a working control key because again this little uh, nickel plated ring is the only part that is actually involved in the control mechanism everything else is just a standard uh, standard uh, six pin pin tumbler uh, uh, system and so, yes, it can be mastered, uh, just like any other Schlage lock, but uh, none of that really matters to whether or not you can uh, get the control key. And, in fact, if you want to uh, pick one of these to control, it's a lot easier, actually, than the large format or small format, where you have to uh, do all sorts of crazy things uh, to try to get all of your tension just onto the control sleeve. Um, this, you can uh, just take a paper clip and shape it so that it lifts that control pin and just leave it stuck down there holding that pin in place and then pick it just like a standard six pin lock and when you get a, about 20 degrees rotation on it, just try to pop that thing out and a good amount of the time you'll be able to do it. So, uh, hopefully now uh, you understand the basics of how interchangeable core locks work. And again, I want to thank Jeff Moss and Aiden McCarthy for uh, letting me have this thing to uh, show you all. And until next time, have fun, happy picking, and stay safe.